Hello there everyone and welcome to another episode of Tavaria Modern Masterclass. In the last lesson we covered the basics for items, this time we are going to be covering the basics for making tiles. In this video I am going to be covering two different things. The first topic is the methods and properties of a tile and the second topic we will cover is making it so an item will place the tile in the world. So let's get started with creating a basic tile. Create your tile class. It is best to have this in a tiles folder due to possibly using the same class name for both the item and the tile. Like with the items, we need to use a few using tags. Firstly, we have the terraria.modloader tag, which we will be using to access the mod tile class. While you're at it, add the terraria tag as we will need to access the main class as well. Change your class name to public and extend mod title. Now let's override the first method. We will be overriding set defaults. This is where we will be putting a lot of the properties for the tile. First, let's make it so the tile is a solid tile. To do this, you will be using the following code main.tilesolid with an index of type, and you'll set this to true. This will make it so the tile will have collision. Next, we can make the tile merge with dirt using main.tilemergedirt with an index of type and set this to true. You'll want to make sure that the tile texture has the merge dirt part otherwise the tile will not merge with dirt. Let's make it so the block emits light. To do this we will be using a property and a method. First add main.tilelighted with an index of type and set this to true. This will make it so the tile will emit light. We will then override the following method, modify light, which requires the RGB values to be modified, like in the example above. To make the tile drop upon it being broken, we use the property drop, then the item ID you will be using. For example, if using a vanilla item, you would use drop equals item.dirt. You'll need to add the Terraria ID using tag. Or you can use drop equals mods.item type, then your item's name. We can also have the block emit particles if we so wish. To do so, use dust type equals then the dust ID you'll be using. For example, you would do dust type equals dust ID, then a vanilla ID, or dust type equals mod.dust type, and then the name of your dust. We also need to override the numDust function. Then we can use the following bit of code to generate particles. num equals fail question mark 1 colon 3. Some tiles can be destroyed if they touch lava. Normally these are used for vines, grass or other stuff. And to make it so it is destroyed when lava touches the tile we use main dot tile lava def with an index of type and we set this to true. For this next one we need to be able to access the color class in XNA. So add the microsoft.xna.framework tag to your class. We will need this to make a map entry. Map entry is where when the map is open it will appear as that color and possibly have the name that is given to it. For this first part we will be given no name. So add, add map entry, open brackets, new color, open brackets, zero, 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 close brackets and close brackets. Replacing the values with a number between zero and two, five, five. Or you can do add map entry, open brackets, color dot color, replacing color with one that is in the color class. A new class that was added in 0.10 called mod translation. You will add the following line mod translation name equals create map entry name. This will make it so the name is ready to appear in game. Well kind of. We need to give it a name. To do this type name.setDefault name replacing name with your block name. Finally we need to add name to add map entry which we do after color like so add map entry new color comma name 
and the name will now appear when we hover over the tile inside the map. Now we need to determine how strong the tile is. Currently its value is zero, which means anything can break it. But if we use min pick equals value, then we'll have to use a pickaxe with a minimum pick value of what the tile asks for. For example, a min pick value of 20 cannot be broken with a copper pickaxe. Instead, you'll need something like a gold or platinum pickaxe. For the texture, I have supplied a basic template that you'll be able to use. Remember that the scale rule applies for tiles as well. The tiles that are required have a red border, while tiles required if using merged dirt have a blue border. Now, let's modify our item to make it so we can create the tile. Either open or create the item that will be placed. And we want to add the following properties to our set default method. Item.consumable equals true. Item.useStyle equals 1. Item.useTime and Item.useAnimation. Recommended set these to about 10. Item.createTile equals mod.tiletype and then the tile name, which will make it so that the tile that is created is the tile that we have passed in. With that, we are now able to test the game and see if it works. This is the basics for creating a normal tile. For furniture and larger tiles, I'll be covering this in an advanced lesson due to it being slightly more complex than a normal tile. That covers everything for tile basics. In the next lesson, I'll be covering dust and making dust generate from tiles and items. I also want to apologise for something I said in the last episode, and that was covering large tiles in this episode. I realise that large tiles is currently more advanced than this lesson, and I do not want to overwhelm the viewers. Thank you everyone for watching. If you have found this video helpful, please click that like button and share with others. If you are not subscribed to the channel, be sure to click that subscribe button as well as the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a video. All social media is in the description, so until next time, thank you everyone for watching, goodbye.